what Badenbong has is very unique. Um, not just about food, about everything. Uh, the traditions that Badenbong holds on to, I think is very special. And I, I don't even think that Badenbong, people in Badenbong realize how special it is. Um, I think that it's, um, it could be even underappreciated because the, the food, the culture, the tradition that is located in Badenbong is extremely special. So good morning, uh, Mrs. Uh, Shane, and uh, thank you for granting us uh, the opportunity for the interview here in Batambong Province. Thank you. So, Mrs. Uh, Shane, uh, you have been in Cambodia since uh, 2017. Yes. Is it your first time in Cambodia or in Batambong? Uh, 2017 was my first time in Cambodia, mm -hmm. and my first time ended up being in Batambong. So mm. I kind of got off the the airplane and just drove straight to Batambong and was here for my first chunk of time, which was three months. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it was like a work trip, something like that, during that time? Uh, so it, uh, it's through a program called Youth with a Mission. So mm -hmm. we can say it's missionary work. Mm -hmm. um, and then during that three months, I loved Cambodia so much that I wanted to come back again. Mm -hmm. And so I went home and I realized I wanted to come back. So I came back for six more months as a volunteer here. I mean, yeah. yeah. มาทางแหน่อันนี้ตามพอครับเยยโยนมปีเจ๊ะเยยโยนมปีให้มีนกบวนปอนเนี่ยเจ๊ะอ๋อโอ้บ้านป้าอ้นสปอนมนี่อา
it's not a very short time, uh, to be honest, but it is also, you know, for you to immerse in the locality, yeah. especially in, you know, a province that is still a bit far away from Phnom Penh. Yes. Um, you know, the way you speak Khmer, you know, I listened <laughs> with the tonation. Yeah. I think it's almost uh, perfect. Thank you. you. Know? <laughs> and um, how did you get here? Like, why did you learn Cambodia? And of course, the following question is that why you are so immersed in Cambodian food, let's say. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, I think I gave myself um, an option. Mm -hmm. Once I realized I really wanted to build a life with my, my now husband before mm -hmm. he was uh, my, um, what's it called in English? <laughs> Sometimes I forget English now. <laughs> Uh, enga engaged engagement. Yeah, we were yeah, engaged, yeah. so he was my fiance. Oh. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I once I realized I really wanted to build a life with him here, I gave myself no choice. Mm -hmm. I said I either I'm going to learn as much as I can or um, or not. And so I committed myself to the language. I committed mm. myself to knowing more about the extent of the food. I committed myself to learning about as much as I could. Mm -hmm. uh, so then I can, um, yeah, learn more about my husband's family mm -hmm. um, and where he comes from, and then we can build a life yeah. together. Because you know, in Cambodia, people speak English, I think, more or less, you know, everywhere. Yes. So you don't just wait for them to speak English, but you just speak my to them. Yes. <laughs> Vice versa, in the opposite way. Yeah. So how did you, how did you learn Khmer? Like you, you speak every day or you have your teacher in Khmer? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I think it's, I think from, from like what you said, I mm -hmm. like to speak Khmer first. I think it's respectful to when you mm -hmm. go into a country to learn as much as you can about the country that you're going into. Yeah. Uh, so then it's not there. It's not, you know, I'm not expecting them to learn from me, but I would mm -hmm. like to learn from them first. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so when I started learning Khmer, I realized that I was not good at the sounds at all. Mm. Um, I used to be a singer, and so oh, okay, okay. like vocal things mm -hmm. are. I, I used to sing a lot, mm -hmm. uh, so the vocals of sounds I was familiar with, but mm -hmm. the Khmer sounds are completely different than anything I've ever experienced. Mm. So I committed myself with a teacher. Uh, to learn writing, reading, and speaking, mm -hmm. so that I could really get the sounds down. Mm -hmm. um, so that when I learn more about the, you know, the normal everyday conversational words, then I I hear it and I know exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Instead, whereas before I'd kind of guess like, oh, is this the sound? Is you know, ah, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. It, there are many, there are many vowels. Yeah, yeah, many vowels and. They're difficult, mm. um, but if you make things that are difficult less difficult, if you work on the more difficult things, mm -hmm. then they become easy eventually. Mm -hmm. They're still not easy for me. <laughs> so right now, if you go to the fish market, yes. you can communicate with the seller. Like it's nothing, you know. I would say right now, mm -hmm. I would feel comfortable communicating anywhere in Cambodia. Mm. Um, there are different dialects and different mm -hmm. places where I'm like. The, just Takes a little bit a different. Yeah, a minute yeah, to yeah, understand yeah. what they're saying, mm -hmm. but uh, as soon as I get, you know, the differences, then I can try and work my way around it to mm -hmm. have a conversation. Do yeah. you know how to read and write in Khmer also? I do know how to write and read, but oh, it's not okay. completely fluent because I don't mm -hmm. practice it every day. Yeah, yeah. So, for example, like if I am speaking to my friends on the chat and they mm -hmm. are writing, you know, Khmer script, mm -hmm. I usually will be able to read it. Mm -hmm. um, if there's like a word I don't understand, then, you know, I'll just be like, hey, what's this word? Yeah, very difficult. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but usually I'll be able to understand like common words that we use every day. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but if you're giving me a book, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to read the book. Yes, ma'am. But focusing on your, you know, your, your, let's say what we call um, vlog, yeah. if I can say like that. So do you... You normally do vlog about Cambodian cuisine. Yes. So you mean like uh, the cuisine on the street? Yes. You know, how the local eat? Yeah. Um, how did that, you know, came to your attention? And, you know, like why out of a sudden you think that, oh, okay, so Cambodian food should be on the internet and, you know, <laughs> you know uh, introduced by me. Yes. And what is your audience? Is uh, Cambodian people speaking English or maybe, you know, people from America, let's say? Yeah, I think that... Um 
I think that what Badenbong has is very unique. Um, not just about food, about everything. Uh, the traditions that Badenbong holds on to, mm -hmm. I think is very special. And I, I don't even think that Badenbong, people in Badenbong realize how special it is. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it's, um, it could be even underappreciated because the, the food, the culture, the tradition that is located mm -hmm. in Badenbong is extremely special. And so, um, you know, I, I wanted to do more videos on the food in Badenbong because of how rich the tradition on the food part of the culture is mm -hmm. still held on to very well uh, and, very, and done very well. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, I started making videos about the food because, for one, I love the food. Mm -hmm. It's something that I'm passionate about and I enjoy it. I truly enjoy um, going and having the snacks on the street, which is extremely part of culture as well. Mm. I, don't have, I don't have food carts at home. I don't have people selling me things that are like homemade. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you go to a bakery that it's homemade, but you have to go into the actual establishment. Mm. Whereas here, people have small places that are in front of their houses that they woke up at three in the morning to make so that the community could enjoy. That mm. is extremely special. And I think that it's important to highlight the things that make a community unique and special. So that is what caught your attention in 2017, let's say. To um, see, you know, like a, a mother and a daughter waking up, setting a small table of food in the morning. <laughs> you know, that, that yes. I mean, get into your attention like, yeah. deeply? Deeply, yeah. Mm. That and um, I think just the beauty, mm -hmm. like the nature, and the the weather even got my attention. Mm -hmm. Just the peace that I felt in the country. Um, and that was just on the natural side of things. Mm -hmm. Then there was the people side of things and um, the emotions and kindness that I felt from the people, the, generos the general generosity, people mm -hmm. welcoming me into their house. They don't know who I am and they're welcoming mm -hmm. me for their dinner time. That's amazing. I, I have never experienced that before. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just, I was overwhelmed with how much generosity and kindness and love and um, genuineness. Mm. It, it's not fake. Yeah, Cambodians yeah. are not faking it. It's real. Mm -hmm. And um, but yeah, I wanted to come back and I wanted to know more for myself and also to learn from Cambodians. Mm -hmm. I think we can all learn from each other in this world. And I, I wanted to learn more about that from Cambodians. <laughs> yes, ma'am. But you know, for let's say American people who want to taste Cambodian food, um, you know, the food taste and the composition, the ingredient, they can be quite different. You Very know, different. Here we use a lot of, um, I can call like smelly thing, you know, fermented <laughs> Delicious fish. Delicious things, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, yes. that can go along with each other. Yeah. So do you recommend them to come here and then, you know, like go full speed on Cambodian food? Or maybe you, you, you know, you should like, uh, they should like, you know, adapt, you know, to the local bacteria, let's mm. say, you know, your gut's bacteria. Yeah, that's a really hard question. Yeah. Um, I think, hmm, how should I answer this question? I think that, I think that you should go full in. <laughs> full in, really? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Uh, I also think that you should be wary about what places you do go to. Mm -hmm. um, I think no matter where you go, I mean, you could say I have stinky things in my culture too. Blue cheese is very stinky. You know, blue cheese is very stinky. Oh, blue cheese, mm -hmm. blue cheese. It's very um, stinky as is well. Is it like blue or yellow? It's actually blue. Okay, maybe I should do more research on that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take you to friend, friends. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, blue cheese is very stinky as well. Uh -huh. And so that's like, that's every culture has different uh, strong flavors in their mm -hmm. food. And I think it's really important to learn more about what makes each other's food so unique. And so, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, Prahog is a very unique part of Cambodian food and, and mm -hmm. I think that some places do it, I'm going to be honest, I think that some places do it very well and I think that some places don't do it very well. Mm -hmm. So let's just find the places that do it very well and highlight those places and mm -hmm. then try um, the food and mm -hmm. I think that for very new tourists um, that have never really traveled before, let's maybe not jump right into the... Mm -hmm. Like the, raw, the, like the real raw, raw fish, yeah, uh, the raw, raw, raw yeah, fish. Yeah. But you know, I think that uh, like uh, mm -hmm. like the sour soup from mm -hmm. Cambodia, 
that puts a little bit of, of the raw brahak in it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think is completely fine. Mm. Uh, that would be the first step. Mm -hmm. Is to try something with a little bit of that flavor, maybe not a hundred percent, but mm -hmm. just to introduce that. Hey, we can use um, a strong, a strong flavor to mm -hmm. accent and highlight a meal. Yeah. Yes, I think it's important. But how do you spot, you know, like um, what we call um, the potential food that foreign audiences might enjoy? How do you know which one to choose on the street? Let's say. Oh my goodness. <laughs> which like, one like you know, you just see that okay, you have like a, a feeling that okay, so that might work, and then when you do it, it actually works. I mean, what what is your experience in in doing that? Um, I think. I think. It's always opinion based, of mm -hmm, course, mm -hmm. and I rely on my own opinion a instinct lot. Also, yes, yeah, instinct also, yes, yeah. And so, um, for example, like I really enjoy White Rose Restaurant, mm -hmm. um, and so I would promote going to try my food at that place because mm -hmm. I have experience. My opinion is that they do certain traditional Khmer foods really well, mm -hmm. and so I. I don't know if you know the 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 tourist population is going to really enjoy it, just like me. Mm -hmm. But since I had a great experience, I think that other will, other people will as well. So does that I answer see. your question? Yes. Yeah. It's okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and at the same time, you know, because um, uh, let's say guest house or maybe you know hotel that are caters more toward the Western, you know, yes. tourist. You know the way they built it is, you know, how they call it rusty. You know, like the rusty, but in a good way. You know, not yes. not like the rust under the car, no, not like that. Like rustic or something. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, rusty. You know, it's more like simple. You know, yeah. very light material. Everything is more like organic. Mm -hmm. It's not industrialized. You yeah. Know? It's, so is that you know what? I mean, not all, of course, but you know, in general, based on your opinion, is that what European or maybe American people prefer? Oh. You know, to be in the village to see, oh, see you know, the local. Yeah, I think I think that uh, I think we're all looking for a little bit of real in this world. Mm, Meaning, okay. we are all looking for a little bit of authentic uh, uh, authenticity. Like, what is real? And so, if I think it just depends on the tourist, or that depends mm -hmm. on the person. Uh, but for me, if I had an option between the real. Food the real and yeah. the, the semi real. Semi -real. <laughs> I want to try the real thing so mm -hmm. I can have a better judgment or opinion about it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, and then maybe if it's too strong or something, then mm. I can change a little bit. But I think I think for sure I think that a lot of um, Western people are are definitely looking for an authentic experience about. Mm. Cambodian food or culture or something, and so I think yeah, food in the village is definitely um, very special, mm -hmm. and it should it should be tried, um, or I like to say homemade. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not the industrialized plate of food. It is the homemade. It is the from your mama's hands to to the mm -hmm. table. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, instead of. Yeah, kind of like I don't want to say knockoff food, but like mm -hmm. just the the food that's made. Like the vegetable grown behind the house. Yeah. Or maybe the fish caught at the pond, exactly. you know, ne next to the house. So that is what y you know you want to see and want to feel. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I think it definitely depends on the quality of where these mm. things are grown as well. That mm -hmm. we need to be careful a little bit, but yep, absolutely, yep. I think that authenticity in food is really uh, important, uh, especially in, when that involves tourism as well. Mm, yeah, I okay. want to try something real. <laughs> <laughs> and you also cook Cambodian food. I do. Yeah. You you learn from what you want to taste. Uh, you know. Oh. <laughs> maybe so someone teach you, or maybe oh, I wake up today. Maybe I just want to do that food by myself. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, so did you know that I'm pregnant? Uh no. I am pregnant. Really? Yeah. Oh, so right now I have a lot of very oh. strong, like food. Cravings, mm, and so okay, like okay. yesterday, I wanted um, uh, ginger and pork, kind of like a oh, chakney, yeah, chakney, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, and so I had no idea how to make it before because I have never made that food before. Mm. But um, I have made chapres before, mm -hmm. so I asked my husband, "Can he just like give me a few instructions mm -hmm. about making?" Uh, chak mm -hmm. so I made that, and he's like, "Okay, now the rest is just like chap rice at go. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. Just do it like that, and so I, I kind of just 
understood so you, from you that learn learn along the process yes. yeah 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 wow yeah yeah and also the last question you know if you were able to tell yourself back in 2016 2015 yes. you know when you didn't know a lot about batambong yeah you know if you have like you know a few sentences a few paragraphs to tell your former self what would you tell yourself about batambong back then you know when you don't know a lot about this province that's such a good question because yeah. Like, I never thought I would be here in 2015. Mm. Um, <clears throat> but I think that, um, I think I would tell myself that your adventure is mm -hmm. just about to start and you have no mm -hmm. idea how much you're going to love it. So mm. I think I would tell myself that. And I would probably believe, not believe you, what adventure you're talking about. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. But yeah, I think, I think that because in 2015 I was still in high school. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I hadn't even finished school yet, but mm -hmm. I was so excited to experience the world and I did not know that Cambodia would be the place I would end up. So mm -hmm. I think I would tell myself, hey, hey kid, your venture is mm -hmm. just about to start and you're going to love where you're going. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, uh, you know, the, the expectation exceeds. Oh, so, yeah. so the reality ex exceeds your expectations. Exceeds during, yeah. expectations, yeah. Okay, yeah. and you plan to stay in Cambodia? I, I plan to stay in Cambodia. Um, uh, I, I would like to have kind mm -hmm. of a life where I could travel between the United States and Cambodia mm -hmm. because my family yeah, and relatives way, yeah. are there. Yeah. And so if I only stay in Cambodia, then I think it would be really hard for us to experience life together. Mm -hmm. But if I had kind of a part-time Cambodia, part-time United States, mm -hmm. um, that would be that would be really great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if family yeah. could, and we could experience life together in both places. Yeah. Okay. That'd be ideal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, thank you, uh, yeah. Mrs. Uh, Shane, yeah, thank for you so your much. insightful interview here in yes. Batambong province. And yeah. I hope, yes, you will enjoy Batambong thank you. for a very long time to come. Thank you so much. Thank you so yeah, much. I appreciate thank your you. time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>